airfield landings can have different procedures depending on the operator and who controls the airfield. So in this video we're going to go over a Navy style approach that will help you prepare for transitioning to an aircraft carrier. So as you begin this approach you'll be offset to the outside of the runway at 3 nautical mile initial at 800 feet and 350 knots. You continue flying along next to the runway and as you get about two thirds of the way down You'll initiate a level brake, maintaining altitude in the turn with idle throttle and the speed brakes out. And as you pass below 250 knots, you're going to extend the landing gear and the flaps. And as you finish off this brake turn, you'll be on the opposite heading that you started with on a downwind. You should still be at about 800 feet AGL. And then once your wings are level, you can initiate a descent down to 600 feet AGL. And you're going to get yourself trimmed up to be in an on-speed AOA condition. And during your descent you can verify your landing checklist has been completed and then by the time you reach about here you'll be a beam in the touchdown zone. You want to make sure that you're on speed, landing checklist is complete and if you wanted to you can count to 15 seconds subtracting one knot for a headwind. This way you get your timing right as to when you're going to make your base to final turn if you want. So as you're extending this downwind, getting ready to turn base to final, you look over your left shoulder for the touchdown zone and when it's in the right position, you begin a 30 degrees angle of bank turn and initiate your descent and add about 2 to 3% N2. Then halfway through the turn, you should be at 450 feet AGL on speed. And as you continue through the turn, in the last 45 degrees of turn, it's going to be about 350 feet AGL and on speed. As you come into final, you're going to start reducing that power that you added, get the wings level should be about 300 feet AGL and on speed. This will give you a final about 15 to 70 seconds long. And as you touch down, bring the throttle to idle and then start your braking process. Now remember that while your on speed angle of attack will never change, your approach speed is going to change based on your weight. So it's a good idea to know where the speed is going to be if you're in straight and level 1G flight. Using a performance graph, this will let you easily find an approach speed using your weight. You can use the checklist page for your weight and then find it on the graph. Then you go up to the flaps and angle of attack, then left for the approach speed, and you'll adjust it for CG and stores as needed. Alternatively, you can use a quick formula to figure it out as well. So if you're on speed without stores and 2,000 pounds of internal fuel, this is going to equal 125 knots plus 2.5 knots for every extra 1,000 pounds of weight. So if you had 4,000 pounds of fuel with no stores, be 125 plus two and a half times two, which equals 130 knots. Keep in mind though that this calculated on speed airspeed is accurate only at plus one G. So in the base to final turn, when your bank angle in G increases, this is going to cause your on speed airspeed to increase as well. There's a controls indicator mod by Rackham, which can help you know exactly what trim setting is required to be on speed. The original and the altered mod that I've got are available for download in the description. Ivan K altered the mod to show two white lines. This will indicate where 8.1 degrees of angle of attack is. So if you adjust the pitch trim to put the cross between them, this will trim you perfectly for on-speed AOA. And if you want to display this window, you press right control and enter. So we're starting out 3,000 feet, about 11 miles out, and we're going to get ready to do an inbound call. Uh, the descent flow is being completed and I've created a waypoint on the touchdown zone here and I've activated it as a waypoint. This will help the understanding of what we're trying to show here. So we'll call inbounds way to see first. Infield one one inbound. Infield one one. Fly heading one two seven Fort one. QFD two nine decimal five zero. Runway one three to pattern altitude. Alright, so zooming into the airfields. The runway is on the left side there, so I'm going to maintain an offset to the right because I'm going to make left traffic. And we're going to initiate a descent as well, so I'll pitch the nose down. 2,000 feet a minute, 1,500 feet a minute will be fine. And I'm going to maintain 250 knots in this descent as well, so it's up to you how you want to do it. You can control the throttles manually if you like, uh, otherwise you can also use the automatic throttle control. That way it'll maintain whatever airspeed is designated at the time it's engaged. Now I'm descending to 800 feet AGL 
and since this airfield is at 400 feet above sea level, this is going to be equivalent to 1200 feet MSL on the altimeter. I'm going to leave the alt switch in Barrow because of uneven terrain around the field itself. And uh, once we get near this 5 mile bubble, ADC is going to tell us to contact the tower and we can request a landing. In field, one, one, request landing. It's been inside a five mile bubble around the field. So if it's increased the throttle, that'll disengage the ATC. And we can look at the before landing flow through an airfield. Alright, so we've accelerated to about 350 knots, 800 feet AGL now at three miles. So we check that flow is done. And we're good to go from here. So like we mentioned, we're going to fly the offset to the right hand side of the runway, just like you would on an aircraft carrier approach. This way, uh, at least for the airfield, you can verify that no one's going to be um, taking off into your immediate airspace as you perform the brake. So you can lean out to the left and just have a look if you like. Obviously there's no one here, so I'm just flying single player. So we're flying along and we get to about two thirds of the way down the runway. We bring the throttles to idle, speed brake out, roll into the turn and start pulling. About 2G will work, beginning with an airspeed of 350 knots. So you want to maintain your altitude in this turn, so we're trying to maintain that 1200 feet. As you slow below 250 knots, landing light comes on, landing gear out, it flaps out. You're going to start increasing the back pressure a little bit as well to keep your altitude. Relax your angle of bank as needed. Reciprocal heading is going to be 310. So we're going to start adding our pitch trim, get ourselves to on speed AOA, and add some thrust just to arrest the descent rate a little bit. And this way you can still keep descending and have a good quick go over your landing checklist to verify that's completed. Now, looking forward to the runway, the 500 foot markers, those are the touchdown zone. And when we're beam them, we should be at 1.2 nautical miles away from it. This will simulate what you're supposed to do in a carrier approach. But unlike a carrier, an airfield doesn't move. So once the point reaches the left 9 o'clock position on the HSI, we note the time and start counting. By counting to 15 seconds, minus 1 second for every night of headwind, it's going to create the same kind of groove length that you have during a case 1 approach. And if you didn't want to do this technique, you can rely on the touchdown zone, so when it gets near the 45 past your 3-9 line, that's when you make the base to final turn as well. So if your time would have started at 28 seconds, so we add 15, that equals 43. That's approximately when we're going to make that base to final turn. So with our airspeed and altitude under control, we can look over the left shoulder and look for the touchdown zone. And as it starts approaching the 45 degrees behind the 39 line, we'll roll into the 30 degrees angle of bank, start increasing the power, we'll try and get a stable 500 feet a minute descent. And as we move through the turn, First checkpoint is going to be at 220 degrees. This is a 90 degrees of turn. And we want to be about 850 feet MSL, which is 450 AGL. It's about 10 feet low. Have a quick look at the runway, make sure it looks right. Next checkpoint is going to be at 45 degrees left, so we're heading 175. We want to be about 350 AGL. It's about right. We want to start increasing our descent to about 700 feet a minute. We can start decreasing the thrust as we start rolling the airplane level. Ideally, the velocity vector is going to be on the touchdown zone at 3 degrees nose down. So you just keep flying towards the touchdown zone, adjusting your power and thrust as needed. 7-800 feet a minute as we touch down will be good. So upon touchdown, throttles to idle. Start applying moderate to heavy braking in one continuous motion as your taxi speed starts slowing down. Now you can apply back pressure to get more stable later aerodynamic braking if you want, but only pull back enough to get the max deflection at 24 degrees. So notice the lack of the flare during the touchdown. If you do a flared touchdown, it's possible the weight and wheel sensors may not activate, so when you bring the throttles to idle, it'll actually be at flight idle and not ground idle. This will mean you'll have extra power in and you'll extend the landing rollout. As you start slowing down, that brake pressure is going to start increasing. 
Uh, you don't want to hold full brake pressure below 40 knots, as that's when the anti skid system turns off. So once you hit about 40 knots, you want to start relaxing that brake pressure to avoid locking up the tyres. Uh, so we're getting ourselves down to a nice, smooth taxi speed. This is about the point where air traffic control is going to yell at us. So our exit's going to be up on the right. It's going to be a high-speed exit. So we're going to join the yellow taxiway line. And then once we get through that, we're going to complete the after-landing flow once we're clear of the runway. So with the nose wheel steering engaged, we can just use the rudder pedals to maintain center line as we exit. It's important to maintain some ground speed, so that way you don't come to a complete stop on the runway before trying to taxi again. That way you don't get in anybody's way um, if they're trying to land behind you. So as we cross over the whole short lines here onto the official taxiway, we'll look at the after landing flow. So for the after landing flow at an airfield, we're going to need to make the ejection seat safe, bring the flaps up, reset the takeoff trim, bring us to 12 degrees in the FCS, turn the rotor off, and right click, open the canopy up all the way. It's either going to be fully open or fully closed, you're not going to use the intermediate position while taxiing. So from here, we'll skip the rest of the way until we get into the parking spot, and then we'll look at the shutdown flow. Alright, so coming to a stop, holding the wheel brakes, and we'll set the parking brake. So we'll left click on that, get it vertical, then mouse wheel to pop it back towards us. Click the INS to off. Interior lights, if you had those, we'll turn those off. Canopy's already open. We cage the standby attitude indicator. As we're steering, we'll disengage that with the paddle switch. For mine two, you would turn those off. Let DDO put on the FCS page. Flaps, extend those out to full. Turn the exterior lights off. So I'll turn the knobs there and then switch on the throttle. We'll start turning off our sensors, radar and avionics. So we get all this stuff turned off just going through the cockpit. The go box is on, we can turn that off. So now we can move the left throttle to the shut off position. We're going to get an associated caution with that. Flight controlled. Flight controlled. So we can clear that caution. Now this next step is completely optional because uh, it's a sim, of course, so you don't really need to do this at all. Um, but if you want, you can monitor the hydraulic pressure. And what we're looking for is, because the left engine has been shut down, we're going to start losing pressure to hydraulic system 1. So looking at the gauge, we're going to start watching the hydraulic pressure fall. And what you're looking for is for that pressure to start going below 1500 psi. There comes 2000 psi. And as we pass below 1500, we have to stick back and forth twice a second and watch the hydraulic pressure that goes below 800 psi and then you continue it for about 12 seconds. You want to make sure that for hydraulic system 2, with the engine still running, that it's going to maintain above 1500 psi and that you don't have any of the blend codes or X's listed in the FCS page while you're doing that test. So with that completed, you can get all of the displays and stuff turned off. So turn off the caution on the left DDI and then we'll turn off the MPCD and the right DDI and looking down to see if we can get the radar altimeter so get that back to its original position and we can shut the right engine down and as the engine shuts down we are supposed to wait until you see an amber flaps light which will be illuminated there uh, but this isn't in the sim yet but once you saw that light then you would turn the battery master off and that'll complete the shutdown for the F-18. That completes this video though, using my flows for the landing through shutdown of the Hornet. Until next time, remember to fly safe and check 6.